And now, part two of Christian Humber Reloaded. The Encounter. When I was coming home from I from school for the summer, I saw a strange creature. I said, What the hell are you? It said, Hold me. I'm hurt badly and I need medical attention now. So I helped it and repeated, What the heck are you? It said, A dragon with the power to control the seasons. I almost said the F word, but I stopped myself. I need a place to live in, said the dragon. A big place. The dragon is extremely large, so I asked, can't you fly? And the dragon responded, yes I can, but my wings are damaged badly so I can't. When I saw his wings, they were trash, and I wrapped his wings with as many bandages as I could get. After I finished wrapping his wings, his stomach growled. I guessed he was hungry, and I had to steal about 5,000 pounds of food, which was tough to get, but I got it. Now that the dragon is full, I hacked a satellite and found a cave in the Rocky Mountains. I took a plane to Colorado and took a car to the location. Of course, I had a laptop with a wireless card and a digital camera. I sent pictures of the cave. Then I measured it, took notes, then went home and measured the dragon. He is 60,000 feet long and 9,000 feet wide. The cave is 200,000 feet high and 20,000 feet wide. He was delighted to have a home. As a reward, he taught me the instant transmission. I, of course, went with him to the cave. Somehow someone followed me and saw the dragon. I detected the spy and deleted what the spy saw and transported her home. The dragon is safe for now, but I hope no one finds him, because the world will probably put him in a cage, which I will have to break him out of and find a new home for him. Or, I could just cloak the cave from radar, sonar, and satellite. Now a day. I now visit my dragon often by using the instant transmission technique he taught me. He's certainly getting bigger than last time I measured him. He was 60,000 feet long and 9,000 feet wide. But now he is at least 120,000 feet long and 18,000 feet wide. I'm guessing he had too much to eat because of his moaning. After I gave him an anti-acid reflex tablet, then he was fine. Then I weighed him and said, HOLY SHIT! Because he weighs 900 quadrillion tons. That amazing weight made me say the S word. He is the heaviest creature on the planet since the dinosaurs walked the planet. I checked the chamber where he puts the bones of his meal and again I said, HOLY SHIT! Because the chamber was full of bones. Some were still wet with blood. Then I checked the entrance to his home. The entrance was a tight fit for him when he goes to hunt or swim. I watched him walk around, and each step he takes, it's like thunder, and his belly makes a sloshing sound like he was full of water, and his belly is also very soft, and I guessed he was getting overweight. I presume his wings fully healed, and I took him to fly around, which he did with some trouble. The race against time. I told him to exercise, but he told me that it was the food that he clutched his enormous belly like he was in massive pain. I tried to see what was wrong with him, but he told me it was nothing. When I came back the next day, I brought a sonic probe and hooked it up to my laptop and scanned his belly, and to my surprise, I said, Shit, you're pregnant with about 6,000 eggs! He said, So that's what was hurting me so bad. I asked him how he became pregnant, and he said, I don't know how I got this large fucking thing, but I hate it. I was shocked to actually hear him say the F word for the first time. Then he cried out in pain, and I saw why, because his belly grew about 60 feet bigger, and I checked again, and there were th more 3,000 more eggs. I knew if he had any more eggs, he would die, because of the pressure of the eggs would crush his internal organs. I had to do something fast in order to save him. I used my instant transmission technique and got a surgical team and their equipment for an operation. At first they didn't believe me until I showed them the eggs which were killing him. I told them he is very important to the planet, because if he dies, the planet will be thrown into complete chaos. So they started the surgery. But he didn't want to get knocked out, but I told him not to worry, they are here to help you. But he didn't believe that. Then he had the same sharp pain, and his belly grew out another sixty feet, 
and he saw it, and finally agreed to allow them to knock him out, but the light was extremely poor. So I took them and my dragon to a hospital to do the operation, and I waited in the waiting room, pacing around and looking at the clock. After about nineteen hours of waiting, the nurse told me he will be fine. I was so glad. And then I asked for how long he will be in the recovery room, and she said, About three years. And I said in surprise, Three years? Shit! I can't wait that long. By then he will be discovered and put into a cage, and I won't let them do that to him. Then another nurse came and said, It fully healed in just an hour. Then I said quietly so no one can hear me, Good boy. To my surprise, he was walking around, probably getting rid of the knockout gas, when he spotted me and said, Let's get the fuck out of here. I sighed and said, Let's go home. Then a ringmaster saw me and my dragon and pulled out a shotgun and pointed it at me and said, Hand over the dragon or I'll shoot! And I said, Kiss my ass, you fucking asshole! The ringmaster was surprised that I said the F word and called him an asshole. And then the ringmaster pulled the trigger, but the shot hit the wall because I was too fast for a bullet. And I got behind him and pulled out my shotgun and pointed it at his head at point blank range and said, Leave my dragon alone, okay? The ring matter said, Never! I sighed again and said, So be it! And pulled the trigger. The ringmaster's head was vaporized. And I put my shotgun away and used instant transmission to teleport out of there. And my dragon was safe again. And I had to tell the police. I had a reason to kill the ringmaster. Then the police told me they were after the ringmaster for 19 years. And they told me he had an illegal circus which had mythical creatures who were treated with cruelty. The effort to purify the rogue dragons. I got a reward of 60 million billion dollars. I was amazed that I became a hero, and the news crew was there too. But out of the corner of my eye, I saw some orphans watching through the window. And I walked over to them. They were scared, until I gave them about a thousand dollars and told them, Go find a home where you will be never harmed again, because I'll be there to protect you. They did. The parents there were alcoholics and were treating them cruelly, so I went with them and found all the alcohol and destroyed it and arrested the drunk bastards and took the orphans to see my dragon. They were scared at first, but then played with them until the orphans were exhausted and I found a shelter for them. Then my dragon needed some calcium. Right when I was going to throw away all those bones, went back for another handful, the bones were gone. I found him patting his enormous belly, and I didn't know he ate all the bones. When I told him to move aside when I heard the rattle of bones in his belly, and I said, You just ate the bones, didn't you? And he said, No, I didn't. He was lying to me, so I said, Nice try, but you have to try harder than that to make me believe you. He said, Damn it. I said very calmly, The bones you ate will give you calcium. He's now forging three swords, which will allow me to weaken dragon clans. But when I fuse the three swords to allow me to capture dragon clans, the three swords' names are Unity, Duty, and Destiny. But when I fuse the three swords, I get the Virtue Sword, which allows me to capture dragon clans. He also made a device that will capture rogue dragons and bring them to the good side. Some of the rogue dragons are enormous, and some are extremely fat and hungry. I then asked the rogue dragons why they rebelled against the humans, and they said, Humans have used and abused us, so we ate them, and we will destroy humanity and rule the planet. I asked, Who did that to you? And they said, A gang did this to us, but now we will eat everyone on the planet, and no one can stop us. I said, Oh, really? Then I pulled out the Virtue Sword and struck a rogue dragon with lightning-fast swipes of the sword, and to them it looked like I didn't move until one of the rogue dragons collapsed onto the floor. My sin. My dragon saw me move that fast, and he could see me strike with falcon accuracy, and the other rogue dragons were not afraid until I struck down one of their comrades. Then they lost their nerve and they surrendered. I told them, don't do that again, or I will not hesitate to kill you, all right? And they said in a squeak, yes. I then said, where is this gang that made you rebel? And they said, 
we don't know. I pulled out my sword again, and they said, In Chicago. Then I said, Where in Chicago is the gang? They said nothing, and I repeated, Where in Chicago is the gang? Again they said nothing, and I picked one up and slammed him into a wall and said, Answer me! Answer me, damn you! The one I had pinned up against the wall ate me. Then I did something I would completely regret. I transformed into a super scion and burst out of the dragon's belly covered in blood. And then when I looked back to look at the dragon, his belly was wide open. I felt awful about what I did. I told my dragon, I want to be alone for some time, okay? My dragon understood perfectly that I needed to be alone for a while. The purifying of my heart. I went to China and told a wise priest what I did. He told me in order to purify my heart, I would have to go to hell and kill a dragon named Li Hong Doi, who was cursing China for 5,000 years. I asked where the gate to hell was, and he told me, I don't know, but use your spirit to find a gate to the underworld. I thanked him, and I did use my spirit, and I found it. But before I entered, a servant stopped me and said, The priest wants me to give this to you for slaying the demon. It was a sword called the Xing Shingo, which was used to slay the demon before. I found out the sword was supposed to put the demon to sleep for a thousand years. I said, This won't help me at all. So I pulled the virtue sword out and used my speed and accuracy to try and kill the bastard. But it didn't leave a scratch. Oh, shit! I said. I then remembered the servant told me the Shing Shingo is the only sword which could pierce the demon's tough scales. I muttered, Let's try this. Then I used the sword fusion on the virtue sword and the Shing Shingo. I got the legendary demon killer. And with one slash, I killed the demon. I was covered in blood. But when I emerged from the underworld, all of China was there waiting for me. When I finally emerged, all of China cheered. And the priest said, You have stopped the curse. You are a hero in the next 1,000 years. I said, Um, I'd hate to burst your bubble, but I killed it. And the priest said, You did what? I killed it. The priest said, You started a yin-yang war, and you will fight alone with no weapons. When the priest took the sword I was holding, but right when he touched it, it electrocuted him. I was surprised that the Xing Shingo became part of the virtue sword. After I used my new powerful sword against 100 demons, I killed them all with one swipe. I then decided to call it Tetsaiga, because it can kill 100 demons with one swipe. I returned home after one year passed. My dragon was happy that I returned home after a long time. I told him the whole story, and he said, I'll help out in this war. I said, No thanks, I have a very powerful sword, Tetsaiga, which can kill a hundred demons in one swipe. He didn't believe me, but when I was going to show him, I got calls from all over the world, except China. I smiled my psycho smile, and my dragon knew I was going to go to war. I started to leave the cave when my dragon blocked my path. I said, What the hell are you doing? I need to save the world! And my dragon said, You are not going out there alone. And I said, Alright, you can help, but if it gets sticky, get the fuck out of there. And he said, Cool, I'll get the reinforcements. Right before I could speak, a demon called K. Kanu called me and said, In ten days, come to the city at dusk, so the war can begin. I said, There are too many people around. Let's fight at the wastelands, okay? Kekano agreed with me, so I told my family I was to fight in a war that will decide the fate of the planet that will start in ten days at dusk. My parents begged me not to go, but I told them, I have to go, because I started the war, and I will be the one to end the war. I trained in a chamber called the Hyperbolic Time Chamber with the Tetsaiga to try and learn some techniques before I go to war. In the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, a day is a year. I stay in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber for the ten days, which means I train for ten years in there. The Yin-Yang War Begins On the final day, 
I emerged stronger than before. Also, I obtained all the Super Saiyan stages. Of course, when I emerged, I was in Super Saiyan form. My dragon could sense my power level. He was scared out of his mind. He told me, Get back, or I'll kill you! I said in slang, You would hurt Sing Song, brother? He could not believe his ears and said, Blade, is that you? I said, Of course, dummy. Who else would have called you a Sing Song, brother? He said nothing, and I said, Let's go open a can of WAP ass. My dragon agreed. Now it is the time to fight. We went to the wastelands, and there stood Keikanu. He said, Good, you have come to fight. Well, aren't we going to start? I said, Yeah, let's go. Before I knew it, he had an entire army of demons behind him. I said to myself, It's time to use my new skills. I pulled Tetsaiga from its scabbard and focused my power into the blade, and I swiped. He laughed and said, Is that the best you can do? In a mocking voice. I said, No, this is what I can do to you, ugly son of a bitch! Then waves of energy shot out of the blade, killing half of the army. Kekanu got scared out of his wits. I told him, Surrender, or I will kill the rest of your fucking army. Kekanu sent the rest of his army at me, but right when I was ready to strike, he cast a paralyzing spell on me. I yelled, You fucking piece of shit! I'll kill you for this! And he just laughed. Then, just out of the blue, smacked him and sent him flying into the cliff. I said, What the? And when I looked where Kekanu stood, I saw a dragon standing in his place. I sensed that power before. I yelled, Season Bringer! What happened to you? You look stronger! Season Bringer said, of course I look stronger, because I did some training. I asked, where did you train? He said, the other world. I screamed, you went to the other world without me knowing? Season Bringer said, chill down, Blade. We have a mission, don't we? I said coolly, yay, we do. But I want you to get everyone on the planet to lend me their energy, okay? Season Bringer said, all right. I will. Keikanu's defeat. When Keikanu recovered from the surprise attack, I told Seasonbringer to go, and he did. I turned with rage to Keikanu and said in a deep, scary voice, Let's finish this. Before he could strike with his claws, I powered up the Super Saiyan Stage 4. Keikanu transformed to his demon form and we were evenly matched and powered when we started fighting. The blows could be felt across the planet. Seasonbringer could sense the fight going on. Seasonbringer completed his mission. He told me he completed his mission. I delivered a devastating blow to the face, stunning him for a few seconds. Then I called for the energy the planet gave me, the energy to go to the ultimate super science stage, stage five. I then focused my energy that I would destroy Keikanu and his army, and that would end the war with just one blow. I did the wind scar technique, and destroyed Keikanu and his army. I wasted a lot of energy performing the wind scar in Super Saiyan Stage 5. I lay exhausted. I was lucky to have Seasonbringer to bring me home. I slept for three weeks. Then when I finally woke up, there was a victory party waiting for me. I was surprised that Caesarbringer had planned the party for me, and I said, You planned the party for me, didn't you? He said, Yes. And I said, Come here, in a playful voice, giving him a nudge. Then pain shot up my whole body, and I screamed out in pain. I had to be taken to the hospital, because I broke every bone and pulled all the tendons in my body during the fight. I had to spend a year in the hospital in order to recover fully. While in the hospital, I snuck out once in a while to go train, but then I would be get caught and be strapped to the end of the bed. When I fully recovered, I had Seasonbringer brought me to the other world, and we both trained there for a year. Then we decided to become one of Earth's great guardians, but we couldn't because the guardians saw what we did, but they did let us become holy warriors. We were allowed to protect the planet from demons, aliens, space pirates, and mainly, <laughs> idiots. We got to train for as long as we want. The warning. Sometimes if I were in a good mood, which I wasn't in at all, we would let some aliens through like the Protoss to make peace. 
If not, well, you get the idea. An enemy alien race called the Zerg almost got through, but Seasonbringer and I destroyed their attack force and sent them home with their fucking tails between their legs. I then got a transmission from a different planet. I studied a map and traced it to the planet Char, the Zerg home world. I said, God damn it! Who the hell would send me a fucking transmission at this time? When I answered it, a woman stood there. She said in a bug-like voice, Hello, Blade. I said in a low, angered voice, Kerrigan. Kerrigan said, I bring bad news. I said, Can't you see I'm busy right now, so leave me alone. But right when I was going to cut the transmission, Caesarbringer stopped me and said, Let's see what she has to say. I yelled in anger. Do you know who she is? She's the Queen of Blades, and she almost made me her fucking slave! Seasonbringer said, Chill, Blade. Kerrigan, continue. I couldn't believe Seasonbringer would talk to that bitch. Kerrigan continued, There is a new overmind growing on Char. I yelled, What? You can't be serious. The overmind was killed by the Dark Templar. She said, Listen to... Go to Char and kill it. I said, How can I kill the fucking thing when I don't have any Dark Templar powers? She said, You do, but you don't know how to use them yet. Go to Sakura and ask for the Dark Templar to help you. I said, How can I get to Sakura without a ship, with slip space, or cold sleep? She stared at me, and she pointed to some dog tags in a glass case behind me. I told her, so they're dog tags from the... Then I smiled my psycho smile, because I had to steal an alien ship that the CIA had in Area 51. I asked the army, Where is Area 51? They said, Sorry, kid, but no one is allowed in Area 51. I was ticked to death and yelled, I have to stop an invasion from happening, and I can't get a starship to get to my destination! How do you explain that? The army knew I was talking about, and blindfolded me and took me there. There were some scientists working on the ship. I examined the ship and said, Nice, it has blasters. I like that. The scientists were surprised at what I said. Of course, Seasonbringer came too. One of the scientists said, The ship is very small. Only two people can fly it. You'll need a co-pilot. Then I pointed at Seasonbringer's direction, and he looked at Seasonbringer and said, he a friend? I said, no, he's my co-pilot. The scientist said, wait, he's your co-pilot? And I said, yeah, so what more do you want? Then the scientist said, all right, he can be your co-pilot. Do you know how to fly that thing? I said, of course I know how to fly the goddamn thing. What did you expect? Mechs, Gundams, huge robots, and many others. The scientists were surprised that I had piloted all those things and said, I believe you can fly that thing. And I said, Just give me the damn keys. Caesarbringer and I were off to learn about my Dark Templar powers. Right when we got there, it was hard to breathe on the planet, but we trained in the depths of a black hole for about a year. So then we were ready. After a few minutes, we were breathing normally, and we set out, but when we found a Dark Templar camp, we had to get in without getting killed. I transformed to Super Saiyan Tage 2, and Caesarbringer transformed to his extremely strong form, and we walked up to one of their watchtowers and called up, Hey, I'm looking for Zeratul. Do you know where he is? The guards laughed and yelled, No human cannot enter. I used my speed to get up to one of the towers and stood on the rail with only my toes on it and said, If you let us in, we won't kill you, okay? They just squeaked. Yes. And then they let us in. And I learned how to use my Dark Templar powers. Now I can finally kill the goddamn fucking Overmind. Overmind complete. I tried to contact Kerrigan, but instead I saw a big, ugly eye, and I heard it say in a deep, freaky voice that said, I am now complete. Now I can control the swarm. I knew that voice. I said, Shit! It's too late. It is complete, and Kerrigan is... No. I failed to save Kerrigan from becoming a slave to the Overmind. Seasonbringer said, It's all right. We didn't know the Overmind grew that quickly. 
and I said, Okay, let's think of a plan to kill the Overmind. Seasonbringer said, Reinforcements? That triggered something in my mind, and I said, We need an army of predators to help us out. Seasonbringer yelled, Are you crazy? The predators won't ally with a human? I said, Chill, Seasonbringer. I can tell them it is an emergency, and they will help. I don't trust them, said Seasonbringer. Neither do I. But are you seeing me complaining? Seasonbringer said, No, but we need an army of some sort. Then Zeratul walked up to me and said, What's going on? I answered, The Overmind is back and wants revenge on the Dark Templar. Zeratul said, So, it's back. We will help you, but our leader is gone. I said, I'll try to find your leader. Then I got another transmission that had a bad connection. It was a very old friend named Takanuva, the Toa of Light, and he said, The Toa will help you fight, but we can't get to where you are. I asked the Dark Templar to build a warp gate, and then I asked Takanuva to tell the Toa to build a warp gate, and tried to open a portal from Sakura to Matanui, and it worked. All seven Toa were on the planet Sakura. Then the portal began to spit zerglings out, and I yelled, SHUT THE WARP GATE! And the portal faded away, stopping the zerglings. After we killed the zerglings, I told the Toa about the mission. The Toa understood the mission, but I needed backup just in case we were going to get overrun. Then I tried a different frequency to try and gain the Toa Metru to help fight, and the Toa Metru got there too. I told them the whole story, and they understood the mission. We then used a proto shuttle to get the char. The slaughter of the Zerg. After we landed, I made sure the landing site wasn't in the middle of the hive, but we weren't. We were about three miles away from the Zerg hive cluster, and I said, We are outnumbered. Fifty against two billion. I told the Toa to stay near the shuttle, just in case we were going to get our selves killed. I said to Sazenbringer, I go Super Saiyan Stage 2, while you go... Before I could finish, he went Super Saiyan. I was surprised and told him quietly, How did you go to Super Saiyan in such a short time? He answered, While you were in the hospital, I did some training, and I triggered something in me that made me transform. I said, Okay, two Super Saiyans against two billion Zerg. Let's go show the Overmind who's boss. Ready, Season Bringer? He said, Yay, let's go. And we both charged in, energy blazing. There was no way the Overmind could know what was going on. We killed every goddamn Zerg that was guarding the Overmind. The only thing that was in our way was Kerrigan. I told Seasonbringer that it was my duty to either free her or kill her. I knocked her out and told Seasonbringer to get her as far away as you can. Then I went Super Saiyan Stage 5, and I said, It's time to die, you ugly son of a bitch! And with that, I used my Dark Templar powers, combined with my Super Saiyan powers, to perform my Wind Scar technique, to vaporize the goddamn fucking piece of shit over mind. The blast vaporized the ugly son of a bitch, but the Celebeats were left, so we took care of them with ease. I finally decided to blow the whole fucking planet up, but Seasonbringer stopped me. The Awaking of the Ice Emeralds I actually had fun killing the Zerg. So did Seasonbringer. I later found out that I'm a half-breed. No wonder I could smell a moron a mile away. I'm half Cyan, half wolf, which makes me extremely dangerous if you got on my bad side. I found out I go to into a frenzy by the taste of blood, which is one reason not to take me off, because you will either see a Super Saiyan or a wolf who is in a frenzy. I've earned the code names, the Angel of Death, and the God of Destruction, because I truly deserve those names for the amount of kills in two months. Not even God and Satan can stop me, which is kind of cool, not have to worry about getting punished by God, because you can strike back at him. I just met a demon who petty killed off everyone when I wasn't alive. Season bringers still keeping the seasons in balance, as always. When I went to the Arctic, I felt a lot stronger than normal, like I was one with the ice. I found a secret wolf pack hidden in an extinct volcano while I was there. When I was there, I felt strange, like my body wanted to shatter. 
and a strange mark appeared on my face. I was going to ask what was going on, but right before I spoke, every one of them bowed down to me. I thought, what the fuck is going on here? I think the leader of the pack recognized the mark on my face. He said, The Guardian has returned. I asked, What are you talking about? I have no connection here whatsoever. He said, Come with me. I want to show you something. And I did. Before I knew it, we were in a huge chamber with a huge gem on its shrine. I was amazed yet curious about the gem. I asked, What is that thing? And why is it so big? He told me, that is the Master Ice Emerald. Only the Guardian can touch it. Go ahead. Touch it. I did. When I did, I felt a lot of energy surging into me. Something came out of me, and from that I blacked out. When I woke up, I was in a bed, bandaged up. After that, I wanted to see why my hand was bandaged up. I took the bandages off and screamed, Holy shit! What the fuck is this mark? Everyone came in and saw I had a golden burn mark on my hand. Later, the Elder came in, and was holding seven small gems that I thought were the pieces of the Master Ice Emerald. I apologized it for shattering it, until he told me, These were hidden in your body, and these are the Ice Emeralds that allow you to go super. I said in confusion, Super? Yes, yeah, super. It can make you even stronger than you are now. I said, If I go super as a super scion, what will happen? He said, You might lose control of your body. I said sarcastically, <laughs> I gotta try it someday. He screamed, You joke about the dangers of the ice emeralds? I said coolly, Hey, I laugh at the dangers. Do you know why? He shrugged. I said, You haven't seen me go super science stage five yet, and that's fun, because just with just a little wave of my hand, I can destroy half the planet. After that, he backed up a few feet, from fear, I think. Or wanted me to show him. Take Kanu's revenge! Before I could show him, there was an explosion. Both the Elder and I ran out of this den to see what was going on, and guess who we found? If you guessed Keikanu, you're right. The ugly son of a bitch is back, and very pissed off. I would be if that happened to me. I sensed he was a hell of a lot stronger from when I kicked his ass. I also smelled a lot of humans, which sucks. I remembered how I killed him before. Then I went Super Saiyan Stage 5 again, and started to prepare a strike with the Wind Scar. But I couldn't do it, because something was holding me back, like an inner demon. The Elder screamed something to me that sounded like, You can't kill him that way! Use the emeralds! I tried, but I couldn't. I yelled back, How can I kill him if I can't use him? Suddenly I remembered, I must do it in front of the Master Ice Emerald. Keikanu's defeat again in Blade's insanity. I, of course, couldn't resist to insult him. Slow think, Keikanu! Old Bone and Bogfoot! That made him come after me. When we reached the chamber that held the Master Ice Emerald, he almost hit it. But when he got close, it fried him. I had to try my luck again in touching it, and the Ice Emerald started to glow, and I felt my powers growing. I finally struck him, and my arm was right through his chest, and I was holding his heart. I had finally killed him. When I emerged from the chamber, my right arm was covered in blood, and I dragged his body behind me. The humans saw what a big mistake they made by trying to kill me. My hair is pure white, and my eyes were bluish-greenish, and my aura is silver. Seasonfringer sensed my transformation and came to see what happened. I swear he was shaking in major fear when he saw me. I yelled, Who else wants to die? If you don't, too bad, so sad. And I killed all the humans in the area. I ran out of energy and went back to normal. When I looked up, there were bodies and blood everywhere. I asked, What happened? The Elder told me the whole story of what happened. I realized I couldn't control myself when I was in that state. Later I tried to transform, but I couldn't. I swore in frustration. The next thing I know, something landed on me. Spin's arrival. When I got ready to kill whatever landed on me, I found a hedgehog about my size staring at me. I asked, Who are you? 
And why are you my size? He didn't respond. I asked again, and he finally said, Spin the hedgehog! My mouth dropped wide open. I said, Spin? You mean, you're the one who helped me get out of that trap? Yep, that was me. I asked, How'd you get here? He said, A portal opened, and I fell in, and now I'm here. I told him, I opened that portal by accident. When I transformed, my power probably caused a small tear in the time-space continuum, and that caused you to arrive here in this time. Spin was amazed that I knew about the time-space continuum, and he asked, How do you know this? I replied, A little toot-tailed fox told me. He said something under his breath that sounded like, Tails, you idiot. I told Spin I needed to know that to be able to go from dimension to another without damaging the fabric of time. I told him in my, I'm not going to do something crazy tone of voice. I'm just getting ready to give the enemy a little payback. He said, not Dr. Eggman. I told him, I'm not after him, you idiot. I'm after the dark gods, because I was a slave to them. He said nothing. I sighed and said, would you help me discover the power of these emeralds? When I showed him, he was wondering how I got them. He agreed to help me, and I took him to the hyperbolic time chamber and spent two years in there. When we emerged, I knew how to use them. I decided to upgrade the ice emeralds, and I did. The ice emeralds were now super ice emeralds, which makes me go hyper. When I got the hang of going hyper, I decided to go super cyan. When I did, he wasn't impressed. So I went super cyan stage five, which scared him. I told him that I'm going to try my luck and go hyper as a Super Saiyan Stage 5 in the hyperbolic time chamber. When I did, I trained a bit to know what kind of power I was dealing with. Every step I took created a crater, so I hovered when I left the time chamber. I told Spin, I can't create the portal because with this power, I can destroy the fiber of time. I was ready to give chaos a whole new meaning of the word overkill, putting it lightly. While I was there, I also discovered I have the destructive angel arm ability. I shot it once in the chamber, and damn it's dangerous to anyone in front and the one who was using it. I had to tell Caesarbringer what I was doing. He screamed, What are you nuts? You're challenging chaos alone? I said, Yep, that's right, alone. He was in disbelief that I would fight alone without him. He gave me that, Can I come too, look? which always makes me say yes. I did. He was excited and impatient to fight an extremely old enemy of mine. I told Spin to open the portal. He did. I told him to close the portal when I gave the order, and his response was, Eggs! I punched him for that. I finally went through the portal with Season Bringer. Confronting chaos for the final time. I said, Location reached. Facing chaos. Battle routine set. Execute. Season Bringer said, Um, this isn't Battle Network. I said, Let's just get started. When I pulled Tetsuga from its scabbard, it didn't transform. I tried a different sword called Tetsume, and it did something I've never seen it do before. It transformed and glowed with an intense aura. The Dark God sent hordes of demons at me, but then I slashed them, and they got destroyed. I realized Tetsume is the Chaos Killer. With it, I went Super Saiyan Stage 6, and then I went Hyper, which scared me, for I don't know what was going to happen. When I used it, when I did, the Eye of Terror wasn't damaged. Then I did my Angel Arm in my ultimate form. The shot was devastating, because I believed it almost destroyed the fucking Eye of Terror. I was helping the Imperial Guards and settling a score with Chaos for making me kill all those people when I didn't want to. Something came out of the Eye of Terror. It was my corrupted form, holding the Slayer of Swords, the Chaos Sword of the Dark God. The final battle between light and dark. I pulled Tetsume out and fought him in a one-on-one -on -one match to the death. I used the Wind Scar, combined with my power, to deliver a destructive slash that could destroy the universe. The blast did kill him for the 900th time and destroyed the Slayer of Soul. But I made sure he won't recover, so I used Judgment and chose his fate. 
My decision was to send him to hell, and I did. I had to finish the destruction of the Eye of Terror. I made sure I did it with my angel arm, with the energy that was gathered from around the universe, and used my energy as well. Destruction of Chaos. I yelled, This is it, Chaos! Your time has finally run out! Now die, you goddamn ugly motherfucker, son of a bitch, piece of shit! Oh yeah! Go to hell, you ugly bastard! I aimed the blast, aiming straight into the heart of the warp. Caesarbringer told me to flee before the blast detonates. I told him, No, I will stay here to make sure it's truly gone. He fled to Pluto and watched the explosion. He sensed me before the blast detonated, and after the explosion, he lost my signal and screamed, No! And he started crying, Flay! Why'd you have to die? Rebirth of Blade. Five years later, he told everyone that I died in armor, trying to end a threat. Everyone came to my funeral. Caesar Bringer was about to say his goodbyes to me when I appeared right behind him. Everyone was either gasping in amazement or fear. I gave the beat quiet signal and said, Whose funeral is this? He said, It's Blade. He's dead. I said, Oh, really? When I said that, he jumped about five feet and he turned around and I was standing right behind him and said, it looks like you've just seen a ghost. Because his face was shocked to see me. He screamed, punching me straight in the face. You asshole! You scared me half to death! I thought you were killed in the blast! I shrugged and he asked, How'd you escape the blast? I told him, Angel grabbed me before the blast hit me and brought me up to heaven to tend my wounds from the battle against my corrupted self. He didn't believe me until I pointed in the direction of a guy wearing a white cloak with a halo over his head. Caesarbringer gasped in amazement. I later told Caesarbringer that I was given the job of the judge in heaven. Everything is normal again. Life continued as normal, except when I had to do my job, which is both fun and boring. But hey, I don't care, as long as I can stay on Earth. I'm allowed to go to hell and do some sparring with my corrupted side, and do some pranks while I'm there. I sometimes go to where the Eye of Terror once was, and I sit on a planet close to it, and remember the fight that made history. I visit the Emperor once in a while to hang out and teach the Space Marines some of my fighting skills. I visit Mata Nui and Metro Nui. While I'm to get there, I'm greeted happily by the Toa and Matarin alike. They still have the warp gate they built, which is still functional. They use it to come to this world when they want to see me, or just to have fun. I did not know what was going to happen to me. But I don't like it.